succeeds in his efforts to move his case to federal court, that would, there's, there's nothing about being booked that makes that more difficult. Yeah, I think Meadows has been someone who has been talking out of both sides of his mouth, and the New York Times has a new story about that right now. You know, he, in a way, seems like a perfect Trump henchman. He's like an invertebrate who, you know, doesn't have, you know, a commitment to principle or anything else. So, you know, so it's not surprising that he finds himself in this position. But I think that dance is unlikely to work in the future. He's so far avoided a federal indictment from Jack Smith, the special counsel. But I think patience is wearing thin. And Georgia has, of course, called him on it and said, nope, the stuff that you did, Mark Meadows, culminates in criminal a criminal indictment. You committed crimes. And so Meadows has now filed two different pieces of paper, Nicole, in Georgia court. One is to say this case belongs in federal court, not state court. And the other is to say he's absolutely immune from prosecution. Both are, you know, poppycock, to, to put it mildly. So the removal to, to for him to move from a state prosecution to a federal courthouse requires him to say that he's performing a federal function. And it's true that the president and the chief of staff to the president have broad powers under our Constitution. But the one place our founders said the line stops, the place where the president is cut out, is the Electoral College for the most important of reasons. That's the place in which a sitting president has the most self-interest. He can self-deal. And so our founders, you know, cut them out of that. So Meadows and Trump were not performing a federal function. They certainly weren't trying to safeguard the integrity of the election process, like the cockamamie things they say. Of course not. They were just trying to, they were in it for themselves, trying to launch a coup. And then on this other idea, that Meadows is absolutely immune, as when Trump has been tweeting this as well. Um, I can't think of anything more ridiculous. Um, you know, first of all, Halder, like back in Nixon administration, Nixon's chief of staff went to prison for Watergate. He didn't get some absolute immunity or anything like that. And if this argument were true, Nicole, it would mean that Biden and his current chief of staff, Jeff Zients, could just install Biden as the next president in 2024 and throw out the popular vote. That can't possibly be how the law works. Our Constitution's never worked that way. These are bogus arguments through and through, and, you know, they'll be rejected in, in due course. It is amazing, though, that they find lawyers to make those arguments um, for them. Um, Luke Broadwater, Neil mentioned.